Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Uh, good to see you, uh, gentlemen, today. Uh, Arizona is home to 22 federally recognized tribes and more than 300,000 Native American constituents. Uh, when the coronavirus hit, I've been a tireless advocate uh, for our Native Americans in Arizona, fighting for the Tribal Stabilization Fund, that $8 billion, uh, also for tribal parity, and engaging with the administration to ensure the execution of many parts of the CARES Act was within exactly. Congress's intent in order to help our Native American communities. Uh, this pandemic has devastated Native American communities and economies. Uh, but I do want to recognize the incredible response by our tribal leaders, uh, the healthcare heroes, uh, the first responders, uh, tribal members and their families who have shown incredible resilience and strength and innovation uh, and just service to others in this incredibly challenging time. Uh, they are doing an incredible job and we're here to make sure that they have the resources that they need to fight and defeat this virus. And we will defeat this virus uh, together. Um, Mr. Fenton, it's good to see you remotely. Uh, the Navajo Nation has garnered national attention and international attention as one of the hardest hit communities in the world. And while FEMA aid has been flowing since the early days, the 25% cost share requirement has proven to be burdensome and seems to unwisely divert funds away from where they're really needed locally. On April 2nd, the Navajo Nation formally requested a waiver for the 25% tribal cost share requirement. Uh, FEMA acknowledged receipt of the letter and reported the request was under review at FEMA Region 9 headquarters. Since nearly three months have passed since the uh, Navajo Nation has submitted the request, when can President Nez expect a response? Yes, Senator, can you hear me? There we go. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, there's a couple different ways uh, that the cost share can be changed. Uh, as you know, uh, one is by the president. Uh, so that letter is in process. In the interim, uh, what's happened is the administration has made CARES Act funding available to be used as a cost share match. So that could be used, that 25%, along with our 75%, to cover the whole 100%. And then we can also look at a change if they reach the 90 10 uh, per capita number, which is $149 per capita. So uh, no state, uh, tribal nation, or territory uh, has received a cost share change, uh, primarily because of all the funding that's out there now and trying to leverage that uh, together to provide the need. Uh, I talked to President Nez yesterday, uh, and uh, he understands that there hasn't been a, re a response yet. That doesn't mean that there won't be one. And of course, always Congress can uh, do that through uh, a change too. I got it. So just to be clear, um, they've gotten no response yet, but where is it in the process of working its way up the administration? Um, so the answer is not no. I, I know there's different ways to address this and one could be in additional legislation, but through the administration's process, where is it in the process and when will they get an answer? Yeah, so it's within FEMA, uh, and uh, typically we don't address cost share waivers until there's a uh, until it goes over a hundred forty nine dollars per capita, which are uh, far short of uh, right now. So uh, and that's what triggers the ninety ten uh, change. Uh, so uh, we have that. Uh, we are tracking their cost share uh, right now and uh, their spend and need. The majority of the assistance we've given uh, to Navajo Nation has been in direct federal assistance. So uh, until uh, we build them, there's no cost share for that. And we've reimbursed them less than a million dollars uh, at this point. So uh, the cost share would be uh, a small amount that they've been impacted, which they can use CARES Act funding or nonprofit uh, in lieu uh, of that too. So there hasn't been a significant impact to them yet from that cost share. We continue to monitor it and work closely with them. So just to be clear, when you say CARES Act funding is a second mechanism, are you talking about using some portion of the Tribal Stabilization Fund, the $8 billion? Of the Treasury money, I think it was $600 million provided to, uh, to, Navajo. to Navajo. Yeah, but that was their portion of the $8 billion is what you're getting at. Okay, right. thanks. Um, so, uh, you know, I want to talk about just the tribal relationship. Early on, many tribes in Arizona expressed frustration about indirect accessibility structure between FEMA, states, and tribes. Again, this is in the early days. Uh, so how has FEMA worked to improve the working relationships it has with tribes in a way that respects tribal sovereignty and also improves efficiency? Yes, yeah, so there's many different uh, mechanisms to coordinate uh, with the tribes. Uh, one is each region has <clears throat> tribal liaisons that work with the tribes. I have 
two in California, <clears throat> for Northern and Southern California, and one in Arizona, and uh, one in Nevada. <clears throat> in addition to that, during this event, I've deployed uh, personnel to specific tribes that are heavily impacted from travel. So I have a team up in the Navajo Nation. Uh, I've had to send people over to the White Mountain Apaches. Uh, and then I have individuals within each state that are also coordinating that along with uh, the states that are communicating to them. So there's a number of mechanisms okay. to ensure the communication. In addition to that, I've dedicated people to help them with the public assistance reimbursement. Okay, great. I can't totally read the clock. I think I might be over my time, uh, but Emma Miyake, I'm going to submit some questions for the record specifically about testing. Uh, I'm concerned the White Mountain Apache tribe now has the highest infection rate per capita in Arizona and are in need of mobile testing sites. So please look for those questions for the record on testing. Thank you, Senator. Thanks. Thank you, Senator.